Okay, number 13. Things are starting to get real. Um, given this function, which is a little crazy, square root of x divided by x plus 3, we're going to we're going to find f of 9, f of 0 and f of a minus 2. This is okay. Um, so these ones not so bad. Remembering function notation, uh, this here just says, hey, your your variable is an x. There's one variable and it's x. So this 9 is taking the place of the x, which means we're plugging in 9 for every x. So this is equal to the square root of 9 divided by 9 plus 3. We're just plugging 9 in. Okay, and over here it's going to be the square root of 0 divided by 0 plus 3. Because this just says, hey, plug in 0 for x. And what does this one say? It says, plug in a minus 2 for x. So this is square root of a minus 2 divided by a minus 2 plus 3. Okay, so now we'll, we'll sort of simplify these down all together and it'll we'll be done. Um, but this is just uh, this is just functional notation uh, and, and I'm, so I've shown you here what that means for each of these cases. Um, and we're not done yet. We just need to evaluate these two and simplify this one down just just a little. So here's the first one, f of 9. This evaluates to the square root of 9, which is 3, divided by 9 plus 3. 9 plus 3 is 12. So this is equal to 1 over 4. The square root of 0 is 0. Right? 0 squared equals 0, which means the square root of 0 is 0. So this is 0 divided by 0 plus 3, which is 3. Well, 0 divided into 3 parts is still 0, right? So that's still a big fat goose egg there. Um, this last one doesn't evaluate to anything. We've replaced a variable with another variable. <laughs> or you might say a parameter in this case. So here we go. What's the square root of a minus 2? Well, that depends. What's a, right? So we can't say anything about that. It's just square root of a minus 2. That doesn't change. On bottom, does this simplify at all? a minus 2 plus 3. So take away 2 from a and then add 3. Well, that, that's the same as adding 1 to a. Does this simplify anymore? I'm going to go ahead and say no. OK? Um, this, this would be sufficient. You could try and do stuff to this, but the, the denominator is already rationalized. Um, yeah, so that's it. We've evaluated these two, and we've simplified this one down as much as we can. Let's go on to the next problem, and then I'll do a new video. On the coordinate axes provided, graph the function 3x min uh, 3 minus x if x is uh, less than or equal to uh, 1, and 2x plus 1. Wow, words. So we're <laughs> the function is piecewise. It's this, 3 minus x, if x is less than or equal to 1. And it's this, 2x minus 1, if x is bigger than 1. So right away, I'm going to put in a line at 1 at x equals 1, uh, because this is our sort of our break point. Okay. Um, for anything on the left of it, x is less than or equal to 1 over here. Anything on the right of it, we've got that x is bigger than 1. Right. So we're going to have a graph over here. It's going to stop at this green line, and then it's going to it's going to pick up over here on the right side with a different graph. So I'll keep these labels here for us. Uh, 3x minus 1 is on this left side. Did I say 3x minus 1 again? 3 minus x. And on the right side, we've got 2x minus 1. Okay. So. 
I'm going to scroll down just a little more to give us more room on this graph. Okay, so here's our dividing line. Alrighty, so what does the graph of 3 minus x look like? So if I plug in 0, I get 3. If I plug in negative 1, I get 4. Right? We've got a line with a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 1. So this makes sense that we get this. So this graph would look like this. Right? And it would continue over here on the left and on the right. But there's a problem with what I drew, is, and it's that it crosses over into this other region. We only want this graph when x is smaller than or equal to 1. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of the parts that are in the wrong area of our graph. So we need to shorten this up to right there. Right, the, it, it would, if there were no restrictions like this, it would continue over here. But this restriction says, don't plot it if x is bigger than 1. That's when we're going to plot this. Okay. So at 1, we do have this. So I'm going to make a hole and fill it in there. Okay, that's because we have 1 included here. Now how about over here? I'll graph it in another color. We've got 2x minus 1 if x is bigger than 1. So just I'll plot this line. It's a line of slope 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1. So if I plug in 0, I should get negative 1. And I go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Just like that. You can make a table of values for that. And then this is the this is the graph of it. It just keeps going over here and it keeps going over here. But again, there's a problem with what I drew. There's a couple problems. Over here on this left side of the green, we're supposed to only have this portion. We're only supposed to graph this thing, not this thing. So, I need to shorten this up, make sure it doesn't cross into the region it's not supposed to be in. Additionally, uh, what happens at the boundary? So at the boundary, the rule is 3 minus x, because at the boundary, x is 1. Here, we're only supposed to let this happen if x is bigger than 1. So at the boundary, we don't have a closed circle. We have an open circle. We're, we're saying that this, this graph here, the blue one, gets really, really close to this point. But once it gets there, the graph jumps up to this. Okay. So with that, I erase my green line, and there we go. This is the graph of that piecewise function. Okay. Uh, just a really quick table of values, uh, like what I was saying, but didn't write. That'd be perfect work, um, uh, or you could say the based on what you know I was saying. Uh, this line has a y-intercept of negative one, and it has a slope of negative one or whatever you know, which means this graph goes down one over one, down one over one, or it goes up two over one, up two over one, uh, repeatedly. You can either say those sentences, write those sentences, or you can write down a quick table of values, and that's sufficient. Okay. All right, so that's it for this question. I'm going to move on to another one uh, in another video.